Hello everyone, it's Thanos and I just wanted to do a quick spoiler light video on the game Return of the Obra Dinn, because I think it was pretty great. I finished it a couple of weeks ago and thoroughly enjoyed it. Return of the Obra Dinn is a game developed by Lucas Pope, who also created the very well received game Papers, Please. If you liked Papers, Please, that might already be enough to have piqued your interest, but note that Obra Dinn is quite a different game. You play the role of an insurance investigator for the East India Company tasked with determining the events that transpired on the recently returned trading vessel, the Obra Dinn. The eponymous ship was declared missing in 1803, but has now returned years later devoid of all crew and passengers. The game plays out as a first-person investigative game. There were 60 people on board the Obra Dinn, and you need to discover what happened to each of them. To aid you, you have two main tools, which are given to you at the beginning of the game. The first is a book which contains some useful information about the ship, but is largely blank with only chapter titles followed by empty pages. Your job is to fill in the pages with accounts of what happened on board. The book does come with a ship crew and passenger manifest, listing every person on board, their names, positions and origins. Note that the fate section is unfilled, this part is up to you. There are also sketches of everyone, but again, it will be up to you to match faces to names. At the back of the book is a glossary, which is useful if you are like me and don't really know your ship terminology, or who on a ship is meant to be doing what. Well, that's all well and good, I hear you say, but how am I going to fill in these fates when there's no one left on the ship, most of the ship is blocked off, and there's only one corpse here on the deck? Well, that's where the second item comes in. The second item is a pocket watch that somehow enables you to visit and explore the moment of a person's death. After you explore these events, more of the ship opens to you, allowing access to more events until you've viewed them all. I'm going to go ahead and show you maybe the first couple of investigations, to give you an idea of the basic game loop, without diving too deep into the full story. So here we go, here's the only corpse that's currently accessible at the start of the game. You walk up to it, the pocket watch appears, and you either push space or click the button to activate it and go into the memory. So here we go. Captain! Open the door! Kick it in! Ah! Lest we break it down and take more than those shells! You bastards may take exactly what I give you! So, the first thing that happens is you get to listen to the moments just before the person's death. Um, and then after that it drops you into a frozen moment of that person's death, where you can take a look around, explore within a small area, and try to figure out exactly what happened. So, it's fairly clear that this guy got shot, but to figure out anything else we're going to need to take a look at the dialogue and maybe get a few other clues. For now I'd just like to just quickly mention the really awesome uh, visual style of the game. 3D but looking like a very old school old school uh, game or very early system type thing. All monochrome with uh, dithering to show the different shading and stuff. It allows some fairly graphic scenes such as this one but without being too overwhelming in my opinion. So after you've been in the memory for a little while it will briefly kick you out back to the book just to remind you that you've actually got a task to do. It'll fill in one of the pages with the dialogue if you need to read it again. The X is displayed next to the um, dialogue that was said by the person who actually died. If there are other people speaking they won't be identified separately so you'll just need to use your own ears to hear the different voices. 
um, but at least this x can make it pretty helpful to determine um, the person who actually died. After you've looked at the book that's been filled in, it'll drop you back in the memory and you'll have as much time as you like to explore through it. So I'm going to go back to the book. And as you can see, the main thing that we're being asked is, who is this and how did they die? So, we can fairly certainly say that this poor sod was shot with a gun. But we don't know who they are, and we don't really know who the attacker is. But we could probably infer it with a bit of thought. So, if we go up to this fellow, this is the guy who clearly shot the other one, but who is he? You can right click or push E to zoom in, and it will also show you the accompanying sketch in the book. So I think we can fill in, based on the dialogue, that this is probably the captain, since these two fellows were trying to um, bust down his door, and he took offense at that, and shot him in the face. So I'm going to go ahead and... So... There are some conveniences in the game, where if you've zoomed in on someone, you can open the book, and it will jump straight to that person's picture so that you can easily click on them and then go ahead and fill in their name. As the game notes this person's face isn't blurred so they can be identified. This means that so far we've received enough detail through memories, dialogue, whatever, that we should be able to determine who it is. As it also states, decisive information is rare so sometimes you just need to make assumptions using partial information. Oh, that's very nice of it to say good luck. But I don't think we need too much luck for a the beginning of the game where the um, events are basically tutorial ones. So we're going to go ahead and say this guy is the captain, Robert Witterall. Having filled that in, we can also go back to this guy and say that he was shot by a, with a gun, not by an unknown attacker, but by the captain. We still don't know who he is though. Um, his face remains blurred because we don't currently have enough information to determine that. There's also this guy, which we don't really know anything about except that he was apparently with the victim here. And we can see there was another guy up here heading up the stairs, though we don't know whether he was with these guys or with the captain or how many factions there are, to be honest. But we can take a look around. He's carrying a knife. But that's basically all that we can get from this memory at this point in time. So, once you've basically reached the end of the memory, this door opens which allows you to go back into present time. At the same time, however, you will notice that this door previously locked to us is now open. So we can go in and lo and behold, there are two new corpses for us to explore. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this one now. Where are they? Must be in here someplace. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. So it sounds like a scuffle. And we can see the result of that. So it looks like this guy who we saw waiting outside before appears to have come in. Um, scuffled with the captain, and 
gotten a knife to the throat for his troubles. We know that this took place afterwards because we can see the previous guy dead here. It is a little unfortunate that... Oh, We can also look around here and see the other guy jumping down. Again, we still don't know whether he's coming to help, or who he's coming to help. Um, but yeah, unfortunately you can't skip this first part before you get to look at the book and then control things again. Um, but trust me, later on there is way more to look at, and you probably won't find the same situation where you've looked at everything useful and are just waiting for the book to appear and give you something to fill in. So we can go ahead and say this guy was knifed. Actually, I'm going to spend a moment just to show you the large number of options available here. It's pretty interesting. I recommend that you take a look through all of them. But for now, we can say he was knifed by the captain. And again, we still don't know who he is yet. Pretty much done here. So we're just going to exit this memory as well. I would also like to give the developer props for the sound design. The sections where you get to hear just before a just before the death has really strong voice acting and sound effects as well. So someone's gurgling, someone's panting. So we can again take a look around, it looks like this guy was coming in probably also to attack the captain. At the start we could hear the gurgling sound which was obviously the result of this guy's death. This guy panting from the struggle. And then during that time it looks like this fellow jumped down, ran in, managed to get a knife into the captain before the captain clubbed him over the head. So, for now, that's a kill streak of 3 for the captain. 3 0, doing pretty well. And to be honest, we don't know what else has happened. Um, we can keep exploring. And oh, look, there's a new person sleeping here. So, that will give us access to something else to look at later. back to the book, and we can fill in the details of this guy, who was, you look through, you might say, was he struck? But then you find that struck is actually being used for whose tails and wings, and say, nope, that's probably not it. But you start to be interested in wondering who might get struck by hooves, tail or wing. But meanwhile we know that he was clubbed by the captain again. We hear the click sound. I don't know whether that means this door's opened or whether it means a new place is open on the ship. I actually think it means that door's opened. Doesn't matter. Um, we can take a closer look at this person. Some lady, don't know who that is yet. But for now, there's not much else that we can do, so we're just going to go ahead and exit. But notice another door's opened, we found another corpse, and oh, the person who was sleeping here apparently died, so possibly they were sick. Or maybe they were already dead. But I'm going to leave those for now. So, so far we've viewed the dying moments of three souls aboard the ship, and yet we're only sure of the name of one person whose fate we haven't even witnessed. 
and we filled in the causes of death of three without knowing who they were. So completing a person's entry can require significant investigation and deduction, and sometimes having to find clues from across many different events, because they weren't all kind enough to wear name tags or call each other by name in their dying moments. You will often have to determine who people are based on various factors, such as where on the ship they are and what they're doing, how they address each other or are addressed by others, the accents, and many other factors that I don't want to spoil since really that's a major part of the game. Just trust me that the whole game was crafted with a great deal of attention to detail and you should take your time listening carefully and looking at everything. Just finishing up now though, I think the game was excellent and a really great take on a delivering a story. Go check it out on Steam, it's available both for Windows and Mac OS. That's me done, and I'll catch you later. Bye!